Let me just start by asking you about how the government has managed the COVID crisis. Very early doors, they got a lot of praise for keeping Vietnam safe and effectively uh, COVID free, but it all seems to be going wrong at the moment. Um, why? Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the government has done a tremendous job managing COVID from uh, April of 2020. They basically have done uh, a practice, a practice what we call identification, isolation and, and communication to the community. And um, with that, they have um, isolated cases down to about 11,000 uh, cases at the moment uh, with a population of about 96 million people. So it's relatively strong. Uh, but as of late, you're right, as of late, this is the fourth uh, outbreak, if you will. Um, it has caused a bit of havoc, and we've gone into a bit of a social distancing policy uh, at the moment. And again, this is part of identification. They've identified groups of people that have been infected, and they've isolated those folks and in the community and in a social distancing uh, kind of way. And, and they've done a very good job communicating to the, to the public. They're constantly communicating to the public. And I get the sense that the public has a high level of trust with the government in terms of what is the right thing uh, to do. The concern right now for everyone is how to access the vaccine. Like you said, roughly 2% of the population is vaccinated. And uh, accessing vaccine is, is a bit of a challenge. I think it's a matter of supply and demand. I mean, globally, people are uh, demanding and then having uh, putting a lot more orders in for, for the vaccine. It's, it's not, and it has to be uh, produced and it takes time. I think Vietnam is in a situation, and, and I think over the next one, two, three months, uh, vaccines will come and, and, and more get vaccinated, and hopefully uh, we'll get back to normal probably late this year, early next year. Andy, Vietnam is one of those story markets. Every now and again, people get very excited because they think that the administration is becoming more pro-market and less communist, and that's an incentive to buy. Or they see Vietnam as the latest beneficiary, maybe, of the push for lower-cost manufacturing out of China. Why is now the right time to take another look at Vietnam? Well, I mean, there's a, a couple of angles to this. One from an FDI perspective, and that's foreign direct investment. Multinationals are looking at Vietnam at a tremendous rate at the moment. And barring the, the pandemic and COVID, uh, it, it is a bit slower for them to migrate to Vietnam. But I think it is an alternative destination for manufacturing. And like you said, lo lower labor costs is one of the key uh, components. As for the FII, which is the, uh, the, the uh, uh, indirect investments, foreign indirect investments, that's that's effectively what we do. We deploy money into um, equity and, and debt instruments. Uh, it, it's a great place to invest at the moment because GDP continues to grow at 6 to 7% per annum. Inflation is under control. Interest rate is lowering. And, and we're seeing returns of 15 to 20% per annum over the last five years. And we'll continue to probably to see that level of return going forward. Um, 2020 has been a tremendous year for the capital market, and 2021 has been uh, has shown so far to be very strong. We're up about 24, 25 percent year to date already, and hopefully, uh, if all goes well, and, and, and obviously the control of the COVID goes well, we'll continue to do well in the in the public equity market.